Good evening, good evening to everybody. I want to welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight here at the Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. So, all right, had a little signal issue right there, but nevertheless, we're here. So I'm going to give you all a couple of minutes. Y'all come on in. Good evening to everybody. Let y'all come on in. As you can see, I don't have a whole lot of bells and whistles tonight, but we have a word for you tonight. Amen. So I'm going to give you all a couple of minutes to come on in tonight. And I am coming to you live. Amen. I'm coming to you live from my home office, from the Paradise Missionary Baptist Church, Missouri City location, if I can say it like that. I told y'all we're a multi-site church. So I'm coming to you live from the Missouri City location. Amen. So I'm giving y'all a minute to just come on in. So we can share the word of God with you. So thankful that you're tuning in with us. Uh, just it's been an awesome day. It's been an awesome week. I mean, this week has just been starting off real good. Amen. God bless you. Good evening, Sister Sone, Sister Tiff, Sister Nicole, Sister McHenry, Sister Ty McHenry. So good to see you all. Amen. Amen. I want to come to you like this tonight so we can get some interaction going tonight. I love just looking and viewing the comments as I'm teaching. Uh, the encouragement means a lot. So, uh, Lady Davis, good evening. God bless you, sweetheart. Uh, this, uh, of course, the interaction means so much to me. So I'm just so thankful that you all are sharing with us tonight. Uh, if I have any kind of audio or video issues, y'all let me know uh, so I can try to correct those. Uh, also, do me a favor. Like we tell y'all every Sunday, every Wednesday, make sure... I want you all to like, amen, Sister Kim, good evening, God bless you. I want you to like, I want you to share, I want you to comment, please do that, please do that tonight. Hit that share button and like, amen, we want to share tonight, I want to, we want to get this number, the number of viewers up, um, as you know, of course, with the, um, we're 100% virtual with our Bible study, so we definitely want to bring our viewers up. I know many people are kind of getting a little... Uh, weary on the virtual church and virtual meetings and everything, but nevertheless, this is the time we're living in. So uh, this is just something that we are going to have to adjust to and something we're just going to have to deal with. However, I do believe that it's still a powerful tool. Amen. So I have, an, I have my 12, so I'm going to go ahead and rock and roll tonight. So before we get into the word, as you're getting your Bibles, we're going to just open up with a word of prayer. If you would just bow with me for a moment, please. Oh, most gracious and eternal God, our Father, how we bless your name. God, how we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to come tonight to hear your word, Father. Lord, I thank you for the word that's going to be shared tonight. God, I pray that it would fall on good soil. God, I thank you for those who uh, who are passionate about your word, God. I thank you for those who get on this live every single Wednesday night because they need a word from God. And truly, God, we all need a word from you. So Lord, I pray that you just have your way tonight in our Bible study. God, I pray that the people who are here, God, whether they're watching live or whether they're watching the replay, God, I pray that they'll be blessed. Lord, touch each and every person that's assembled right now in this virtual space. God, we give your name praise, honor, and glory, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are still in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. We're still in this 12th chapter. Amen. We're still here. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 4 through 11 is what I'm going to read tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11. And I'm reading from the New King James translation, but there are some other scriptures we're going to look at tonight, which we're going to share uh, the NIV translation of it. Amen. Good evening, Deacon Garrett. God bless you. God bless you all. Sister Rochelle, good evening. Amen. I want to begin my reading now. Amen. Once again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 4 through 11, as we still are on, in this study on the nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit. Hear the words of our God tonight. And it says, verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. 
and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit work all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. Now, tonight, my focus is going to be on this. Uh, it's gonna, I'm going to be on this focus on this um, on this 10th verse, this end portion is 10th verse where it talks about to another different kinds of tongues. Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. These once again, this is another gift of inspiration, uh, the different types of tongues. Um, as you know, we've been dealing with this for the last couple of weeks. Uh, and, you know, we've been dealing with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the spirit of discernment. So, you know, we've been dealing with uh, quite a few things. We've dealt with prophecy last week. So if you missed any of that, you can go back and look and view it, uh, view it at your own leisure. But let's talk here tonight about the gift of different kinds of tongues. And uh, the gift of speaking in tongues is probably the most or one of the most misunderstood of all the gifts of the spirit. And this is because of the gift of tongues being a supernatural operation. And it's misunderstood a lot of times because it has not been taught properly. And one of the things I strive to do as we teach on the nine supernatural gifts of the spirit is to bring into context that which most people think might be a little unorthodox or unusual. And what I want us to clearly understand tonight, I want y'all to hear me real well tonight, because I don't want, you know, Paul said in verse one of, of second, of, I'm sorry, first Corinthians 12, he said, concern, concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. Now, that's not saying ignorant as a derogatory term. However, when we say that ignorant means uh, you don't have any knowledge on a particular subject, it means you don't know. It's not saying that, you know, it's not saying you are an ignorant person. But however, my goal for us as a church, I don't want us to be ignorant concerning these nine supernatural gifts. So I want y'all to really hear me tonight as we teach on this subject of tongues. Amen. Amen. So we see, first of all, speaking with tongues as the Holy Spirit gives utterance is the unique ministry identified only with the New Testament church age. Now, seven of the other gifts, such as the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gifts of healing, and the gifts of working of miracles existed in the Old Testament and also during Jesus's ministry. So, and we see here with this matter of speaking in tongues, uh, speaking in tongues actually began on the day of Pentecost. And it has been identified with the church since in since its inception. Uh, if you go back, I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 12, 28, 1 Corinthians 14, 21. And I'll also, if you go to Old Testament, look at Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. Now, what I want to deal with tonight is I want to deal with the sign gift of different kinds of tongues. And what we must understand, first of all, when it talks about the gift of tongues, this is not a learning language. This is not a language that you can go pick up uh, some Rosetta Stone or you can go sit in a class and learn. But it is supernatural utterance from God. Again, it's not a learned language, but it is supernatural utterance from God. And now the reason why I say that is because in some churches, they have classes where you teach people how to speak in tongues. It's as crazy as it sounds, it's true. Some churches, they teach folks how to talk in tongues. You, you join a church and you know part of your new members class is you got to go to Tongues 101. 
because what we want you to do, we want you to have power. So we're going to pull you in this back room and we're going to try to teach you how to speak in tongues. But that is not what the gift of tongues is all about. Once again, it is a supernatural utterance from God. And also what we must understand is that this gift is divine and spiritual communication. And we must also understand that it is a gift from the spirit and not from the soul. Again, so we said we got to understand that is divine and spiritual communication and is it is a gift from the spirit and not the soul. Now, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, and the NIV translation says it like this. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. So what that means is your, your spirit, if you pray in another tongue, if you pray in tongues, that is your spirit praying. You're praying from your spirit, not from your intellect. You're praying from your spirit, man, not from your mind, because we got to understand that this gift flows from the Holy Spirit. So it's not something that you can just grasp uh, in your head space, but it's something that that it is a definite is definitely a spiritual operation. Now, there are a couple of things, a few things rather I want to lift tonight, and I'm going to give us some scripture to go along with what we're talking about, because many times, again, like I said, tongue, the gift of tongues is so controversial in the in the church, especially in the in the Baptist church. Let me say it like that. And a lot of times it's because of, once again, either it's been taught incorrectly or it's been used incorrectly. Because, I mean, you know, if you teach something wrong or if you use something wrong, of course, you're going to turn people off and then they're not going to want to be bothered with it. And But I don't want us to be uh, in that frame of mind. I want us to get a good understanding because there is some power that is packed behind this gift. And I want us to truly understand it. And I want us to truly be able to, uh, to understand it properly and to use the gift properly. Now, first of all, I want to deal with this. The first thing you got to understand about the gift, and we're talking about different kinds of tongues, or, or as the King James translation says, uh, diverse tongues, diverse types of tongues. Now, listen to this. The first thing we, wonder, un, we want to understand is that it is a prayer language for speaking supernaturally to God. Tongues is a prayer language for speaking supernaturally to God. 1 Corinthians uh, 14 verse 2 says, and it's the NIV translation, it says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They may, I'm sorry, they utter mysteries by the spirit. So what I don't want us to do here is because we see here once again, they speak not to people, but to God. Now, the kind of tongues we're talking about tonight, uh, we're talking about the prayer language right now. Uh, and we're not talking about the other types of tongues that need interpretation, which you see in first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27 through 28, which we're going to talk about more next week if the Lord says the same. But but this is when the whole that's when the Holy Spirit rather wants to bring a message before the church. So, again, that's next week's lesson. Right now, we're talking about the prayer language, the, the tongues, the speaking to God. That's what we're talking about, not to man. Now watch this because we got to be careful with exercising the gift of prayer of the prayer language in the midst of unbelievers. Once again, everybody does not have that level of understanding, and, we, and, we, and if and unbelievers do not understand that that the prayer language, the speaking in tongues, the prayer language is for speaking supernaturally to God. So with unbelievers not understanding that, of course they are going to um, they're going to probably freak out. If they hear, if they walk into a room or a meeting and everybody is praying in tongues because they don't have that understanding. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23. And I hope you all are writing these scriptures down. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 23 says, for if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquirers or unbelievers come in, will they not say that you are out of your mind? And once again, that's where the, 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 the hesitation 
comes in. So again, this is only for the believer, those who understand uh, to be able to, to really fully grasp what the prayer language is all about. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If I'm having an evangelism meeting or if I'm inviting some unsaved people to share Christ with them, that is not the time to pull people together and pray in tongues. That is not the time. That is not the appropriate place to do it, because what happens is the people who are coming in who don't who are not saved, they're not going to truly understand what's going on. So we got to be careful not to do that, because what we don't want to do is turn unbelievers away because we're not exercising the gift properly. But if you're praying in tongues or if you're among a group of believers and you are praying and speaking supernaturally to God, that is a different thing. And watch this, because we also got to understand here, according to Romans chapter eight, verse 26, it says in the same way, the spirit helps us. In our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. There are going to be times in life where you don't know what to pray for. Apostle Melanie Scales, McKee is on here. I know this right up her alley right here. Amen. So so we see that you. there are going to be times in your life where you don't know what to pray. But the Holy Spirit prays, according to scripture, the perfect prayer. And oftentimes that perfect prayer, now, uh, Romans 8.26 says, through wordless groans. But another interpretation of that says it, it could be in, in a heavenly language or in tongues. So if I'm in a position to where I don't know exactly what to pray for, then I can begin to pray. When I begin to pray, uh, as some people say in the Holy Ghost or pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit actually prays a prayer for me and the Holy Spirit prays the perfect prayer for me because in my mind, in my understanding, I don't know exactly what to pray for, but these wordless groans or this prayer language or praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit prays the perfect prayer. So we got to understand that tongues are, they, they can be used when you're praying in tongues, they can be used for a, a language, you're speaking supernaturally to God. Once again, it's not about you talking to man. You just got to get that. We're not talking to man. We are praying to God. But we are praying in, as, in, in tongues. And once again, these are different kinds of tongues. We are praying in what you call a heavenly language. Wordless groans. Amen. Because you got to keep in mind, that's absolutely right. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you need. You might not know what you need at the time, but the Holy Spirit knows exactly what you need. So the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit prays the prayer for you, but he uses your mouth and he uses your voice. And oftentimes when he uses your mouth and your voice, that's when the tongues begin to flow. Amen. Amen. So we see here that it is a prayer language that is for speaking supernaturally to God. But not only is it a prayer language for speaking supernaturally to God, but watch this. It is to build up your spiritual strength. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, when we pray in tongues, it is to build up your spiritual strength. First Corinthians 14, 4 says anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. And once again, when we get into that prophecy and, and, and the tongues used that way and with the interpreter, we're going to get into that next week. But I want us to look at the A portion of this verse. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. Now watch this, because usually when someone is preaching, singing, and praying in a public setting and an utterance of tongues comes forth, this is what they're doing. They're building up their spirit man. Anyone who has followed my ministry over the years knows that there will be times I could be up preaching or exhorting or ministering and then I will begin to pray in tongues or pray in the Holy Ghost. What that is, that is not a message to the church. I'm not giving a message to the church right then. What I'm doing, that is my prayer to God because what I'm doing right there is I'm building up my spirit man. And oftentimes when the Holy Spirit is really doing something, especially in a public setting, you, whoever's in charge, has to know exactly how to shift and how to flow. So if, and oftentimes because if we don't know how to shift and how to flow, we'll mess everything up. 
So when, when, so if I'm ministering and I begin to pray and speak in an unknown tongue, that is my prayer to God because I'm building up my spirit, man, because I want to make sure I'm shifting and in sync with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I got to make sure that, that I'm doing that. that is, that's not for the church. That's for me. That's for me building myself up. That's something I need at that moment. And, and many times, because though don't freak out when you go to a church or when you hear somebody preaching or teaching and they, they, they begin to utter tongues. Don't freak out if you hear somebody teaching a Sunday school lesson and, and, the, and, and the Holy Spirit, uh, they're, they're trying to build up their spirit, man, and, and they begin to utter tongues. Don't, don't freak out if you hear someone singing a song and they begin to utter tongues. All they're doing is building up their spirit, man. Because they want, they want to make sure that the, the flow, that when we're moving over in the Holy Ghost, we got to make sure the flow is right. And you can't flow in your flesh. <laughs> you cannot flow in the flesh. That's why it's important that we've got to be in tune with the Spirit. Can somebody say amen tonight? Amen. And, and watch this, watch this. Because as I'm praying in tongues and, and as I'm building myself up, as I'm building my spirit, man, uh, building yourself up through speaking in tongues makes spiritual deposits into your heavenly bank account that you can later draw from. <laughs> Teach Davis, you own it tonight. Amen. I'm by myself, so I got to pat my own self on the back. I don't have the brethren in here with me. Amen. When I build myself up, when I'm praying in tongues, I'm making spiritual deposits into my heavenly bank account that I can later draw from. Uh, it's like being in a, a relationship, in a marriage relationship, a loving relationship. You got to learn how to make some deposits into your mate because one day you're going to want to write a check. And if you hadn't made enough deposits, you can't write a check for certain amounts. Somebody ought to say amen tonight. So even as I'm praying and building myself up, I might not need to be built up or edified too much right then. But one thing I know that as I continue to pray in the Holy Ghost, as I continue to pray in tongues, those spiritual deposits are being made up in heaven. So I know that later on down the line, when I have a weak moment, I know I got something I can draw from. Somebody ought to say amen tonight. I know I have something I can pull from because I made those deposits into the heavenly bank account. So you got to get that. You got to get that. How many of y'all have ever needed some? You, how many of y'all have ever truly just needed to make some spiritual deposits? How many of y'all have ever felt weak in your life and, and you felt like you just couldn't go on? You felt like you just could not build yourself up. You felt like you were just down and out and you felt you had nothing to pull from. But how many of you know that that when you are building yourself up, when you are building up your spirit, man, through the praying in tongues, through praying in the Holy Ghost, then that means that at your weakest moment, you have something you can draw from. And there are times in my weakest moment, I need to draw So I need to make a withdrawal. I'm, I'm feeling kind of tired on this job. I need to make a withdrawal. I'm sick of going through all these financial difficulties. I need to make a withdrawal. I'm tired of being so drained all the time and not knowing what in the world is going on. I need to make a withdrawal. I'm trying to help you to deposit something, you can get something or get a return on. Somebody ought to say amen tonight while I'm teaching. Amen. Amen. So, so it's to build up your spiritual strength. But watch this, church. Watch this. Not only is it a prayer language for prayer language for speaking supernaturally to God, and not only is it to build up your supernatural strength, but watch this. It is also a means to magnify God. Tongues. Different kinds of tongues is a means to magnify God. Watch this. For believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit, tongues are used in their worship and their devotion to God. Once again, you might be in a setting. Hear me, church. You might be in a setting. It could be, it's, it, it could be in the Baptist church. It could be in the Methodist church. It could be in the Pentecostal church. And people will be worshiping and lifting their hands. And the next thing you know, you start hearing an utterance of tongues. They're not talking to you. They're not talking to the people in front of them. They're not talking to the people behind them. But what that is, is they are magnifying and worshiping God through tongues. There'll be times you could be in a service and, 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 and whoever's up leading the worship will say, okay, just begin to lift your hands and just begin to just worship in your heavenly language, in your, in your spiritual language. Once again, that's going directly to God. 
And when it's going directly to God, again, once again, that's not the tongues you need an interpreter for. Amen. Because that's for God. God knows what you're saying. God knows what you're what you're uttering to him. He's he's that's, that's for the audience of one. And that's God. For a uh, prime example, Acts chapter 10, verse 46. Um, it says, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. This is referring to Cornelius and his household. They were magnifying God. They were praising God and they were speaking in tongues. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. So, so, and we can, so we also have to understand that, that it helps us to have a gladness, not just in, in the speaking part, but sometimes you might be singing in tongues, singing in the spirit. Okay. First Corinthians 14, 15 says, I will sing with the spirit. There'll be times when you'll hear people sing in the spirit. Amen. There's nothing that's creepy about it. There's nothing that's spooky about it. That is all God because it is going directly to him. And many times some people don't know how to worship. It's just like with praying. They don't know how to worship. They don't know the words to utter to the father. So what happens is then they'll start uttering in the spirit, uttering in tongues. And once again, their worship flows perfectly. And then God begins to do things in their lives. God's, God begins to do things on their behalf. So we have to understand the tongues is also a mean a means rather to magnify God. Amen. Amen. And again, this is and this is for like I'm talking about believers who once again are filled with the Holy Spirit and have the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. So it's a means to magnify God. Now, now there's a whole lot more that I can say about this means to magnify God. But I want y'all to really, really and truly get this because there are truly many benefits for speaking in tongues for the believer. All right. Because once again, you just have to make sure that it's taught appropriately. We have to make sure that we know that tongues can be used as a prayer language. We have to be, make, be know, we have to also know that it can be used to build up our spirit man. And it can also be used to magnify God. That's that's worshiping in the spirit. That's singing in the spirit. There is nothing that is creepy or spooky about that. And, and, there, and once again, there are many benefits, but but spiritual edification and help in prayer are probably the greatest benefits that we can can we can obtain that we can possess. And you and everybody who's watching me tonight, and, I, and I'm really closing with I didn't, this one. This lesson really wasn't long tonight. So, but everybody who's watching me tonight can receive all these benefits. You can receive every single benefit that we're talking about tonight. The tongue, and, and, and let me help us understand this. Tongues are not just meant for the Pentecostal church. It's not just meant for the church of God in Christ. It's not just meant for the apostolic movement. Every believer who desires can receive, receive the gift of tongues through being having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which we're going to talk about later on if the Lord says the same. But I want us to get a good understanding of it. And, and, and many times, you know, and, and I'm making a bold move on teaching this type of stuff in a Baptist church. Because a lot of times they don't want to hear it. They, 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 don't, they don't want to hear all that. We don't want all that tongues, all that stuff that passed on with the apostles. And, and that passed on, you know, that, that, that ain't nobody doing that no more. No, no, ain't nobody doing that no more. That's that old spooky stuff. And the main people who have that kind of attitude are the main people who live their lives defeated. They're always sick. They're dying before their time. They have no power, no anointing. There's nothing on them because they have rejected this particular spiritual gift. But see, I don't want us, those who are watching, if you follow this ministry, I don't want us to be in that type of predicament. I don't want us to be in that position. And if you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, if you want to have the evidence of speaking in tongues, all you have to do is just pray and ask God, God, fill me with your spirit. Give me the evidence of praying in tongues. I want that power, God, and I know that you're able to give it to me and I can begin to speak in tongues just like millions of other believers. Now, get this, because here's another misconception. If somebody walks up to you and tells you that you have to be uh, you have to speak in tongues in order to be saved, that is a lie from the pits of hell. Do not let anybody ever tell you that if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. 
Don't let anybody ever tell you that. This is not something to, to, I, my pastor said it like this. You know, when I'm saved and born again, I don't have to speak in tongues, but I get to speak in tongues. <laughs> I don't have to know how to pray and, and have a prayer language, but I get to have a prayer language. So I want us to understand that this has nothing to do, you know, speaking in tongues has nothing to do with your salvation. Of course, you have to be saved in order to receive the gift. But as far as, you know, someone telling you that you're not saved because you don't speak in tongues, that is there's nowhere in the Bible where it says that that is not scriptural. That is an error. And we don't ever want and I don't ever want you to feel that way. But I do want you to have some power. Again, you don't have to speak in tongues. But you get to speak in tongues and, and, and get this, get this. You don't have to have a long, drawn out service. You don't have to have 10 and 12 folks standing over you, laying hands and saying, Jesus, 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 come on. Jesus, 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 No, no, no. That's exactly right. It's a gift. It's a gift. I never shall forget. I've been in services where folk, these, these, these. Apostles and these preachers trying to pray over folk and, and sling all on them and make them try to talk in tongues. They never received the gift. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit gift, I was gift, when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was actually just by myself because I heard my pastor teach on this, what I'm teaching you right now. And I didn't go down to the altar. I didn't say, I want to pray in tongues. I want to pray. I didn't, I didn't do all that. I just got off to myself. I say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Ghost. Now, it didn't happen right away, but it happened over a period of time. And that's what I want us to understand. And yes, it is a gift. And I've told y'all every single week that we've been teaching this, everybody's gift is not going to be the same. And just because somebody has the gift of tongues and you don't, that does not make them more saved than you are. I just had a Stephon Garrett moment right there. Y'all got to forgive me. Amen. So that just because just someone else has the gift of tongue, that does not make them more saved or more holy or more righteous than you. So we got to understand that. Amen. 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 So, yeah, this was talking about the, the, yeah, the, the tongues. The gift of tongues is a gift of inspiration. Amen. And I, I would love to see the day. Where the saints of paradise and other uh, and, and other people who follow this ministry want to have the desire to be able to pray and speak in tongues, that would be an awesome and amazing thing. It'd be an awesome, and I and I truly believe that it can happen. I believe it will happen. Amen. That's why we're teaching this because if we're gonna get to what all God wants us to have and get to what God wants us to be, we gotta understand these nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit. And whatever gift that God desires for you to operate in, you got to start operating in it. And don't be afraid of, don't be afraid to stir up that gift. Amen. 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 Well, y'all, that was our lesson for tonight. Amen. As far as the gift, the different, different times, the different kinds of tongues. Amen. If the Lord says the same, uh, next week we're going to talk about the interpretation of tongues. Amen. That's where you got to bring stuff in order. Because, again, we want to be saved and spirit-filled. We don't want to be spooky. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, real quickly, y'all, before we close tonight, um, you know, once again, I'm very more than open. If you want to have a discussion with me on this matter of tongues, I'm, I'm more than open to it. You know, those of y'all who know how to reach me, just, re you know, reach at me. You got questions about anything. Amen. Even the questions I can't answer. If you just give me a couple of days to do some research. I promise you, I'll be able to answer it. But I want to try to, I didn't want to make this too complex. I want to keep it as simple as possible because I don't believe in teaching over people's heads. I want to teach to where you can understand it. Amen. Amen. So real quick, amen, before we begin to close out, first of all, just want to thank y'all for tuning in. I think we got up to almost 20 viewers tonight. Some folk kind of tipped out on me. That's all right. God is still good. Amen. But the ones who tipped out, I need the ones who are still here to help me to disperse uh, the information I'm about to give before we close for the night. Uh, first of all, we got to remember this is a, a very special, a very special month in the life of our church. Amen. This is our 39th church anniversary month. Amen. Paradise is turning 39 years old. Amen. So first of all, we want to thank and praise God for that. Amen. God bless you, Sister Peck. Amen. Sister Tiffany Ashley. God bless you. Deacon Garrett. Thank you so much, sir. Amen. So 
Uh, but, but, um, along with our church anniversary, man, we want to first of all make sure that we're sowing regularly into the ministry. Amen. We want to make sure we're bringing our tithe and our offering. It's Wednesday night, so we, you know, we we do a Wednesday offering. Amen. So we're asking everybody who's watching. As soon as you log off, I want you to go ahead, go on Paradise NBC, or go to Easy Tithe and just sow a seed tonight for your Wednesday night Bible study offering. Or if you want to text to give, you can text 281-667-4886 and you can text to give that way. Amen. So we want everybody to sow a seed, um, to sow, just sow a seed. So a liberal offering tonight. Amen. Since it's, our, it's Wednesday night. Amen. Also, uh, don't forget this coming Sunday, we've got a very special Sunday coming up. We're doing our pre-anniversary park and praise right there on the campus in the parking lot right there at Paradise. We want to turn Sunnyside out on this coming Sunday for Jesus. Amen. So I want you all to come this Sunday at 11 a.m. Now look here. Look here. Now, now, when we did the one in June, it was a little hot. So, you know, I can understand why some of y'all, who passed was too hot, couldn't do it. Now, look here. We're expecting some real nice weather this weekend. Okay? Expecting real nice weather. So, I need y'all to come out and be a part of our parking lot service. Many of you all have not been on the campus since March. We're going to be outside, so it's going to be safe. You're going to be in your cars. You're going to be praising, worshiping. I'm going to preach, and we're going to have us a great time. So I need y'all to come out and fellowship with us this Sunday. I want to see your face. I want to see y'all. I want I want to see y'all. I know we've been, you know, speaking virtually and we've been on Zoom and Facebook Live, but I want to see your face this Sunday. Amen. I want to see you. I want to wave at you. I want to like the old folks say, put my eyes on you and make sure you're all right. Amen. So I look forward to seeing y'all this Sunday at 11 a.m. And y'all know at Paradise, we start on time. Amen. We start on time. I don't care if it's two, two cars in that parking lot. We are starting at 11 a.m. sharp. Amen. So we're asking everybody to come and participate. Then the following Sunday, October 25th, we're going to culminate and celebrate our 39th church anniversary during the 11 a.m. service. Amen. Once again, my friend and brother, my mentor, my buddy, Dr. Andre Jermaine Lewis is going to be preaching for us that Sunday. Looking forward to just hearing a word from God from him. And he's a true expositor of the word of God. So we are just definitely looking forward to hearing from him on the fourth Sunday. Also, don't forget... If you have not uh, taken, uh, if you have not done your 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 commitment for church anniversary, let's make sure we take care of that. Amen. We've asked each working adult to give one hundred fifty dollars. Amen. I have reviewed the latest financial statements. Amen. We're doing OK right now. Amen. But some of you all who are watching still have not pledged or you have not given. Let's please make sure we do that. And if once we haven't done it, I'm just going to have faith enough and know that you're going to take care of it by the fourth Sunday. Amen. Now, Pastor, what are we raising this money for? Our goal is to raise ten thousand dollars because we want to get some roof repairs at our church. Amen. We not, I, the only rain I want coming in our building is the rain from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not the rain from outside. Amen. So we want to uh, contribute towards that so we can start getting bids and we can start getting uh, some roof work done on our church so we can get rid of every leak that's in the building. Amen. That, that's God's house. We got to take care of God's house. I always say that if we don't like it to leak in our own house, we should like it to leak in God's house. And I'm a firm believer that when you take care of God's house, he'll take care of your house. I'm a witness to it. Amen. Amen. So let's make sure that we're uh, that we uh, contribute and we make sure we uh, stay true to our commitment. Amen. Also, don't forget, we are in this. I'm, I got my shirt on. Y'all see I, I, it's clean. Don't I'm, if I have to wear this shirt every Wednesday, I will. But it will be clean. I'm just letting y'all know. Amen. We're in voting season. Let's make sure we vote early voting now through October 30th. If you got to take a day off just to go vote, go ahead and do that. Do what you got to do, because that's what First Lady and I plan on doing. Amen. Go and vote. Amen. Please vote like your life depends on it. Well, really, because it does depend on it. So make sure that we get to the polls and vote. If you don't have a way to get to the polls, uh, uh, you need some assistance with getting to the polls, call the church, email us, info at paradisembc.org. And, you know, we have people that are more than able to try to assist you in getting to the polls. Everybody, we got to go vote, y'all. We got to go and vote. Amen. Amen. We got to vote. 
Amen. Also, let's remember to keep uh, in prayer Sister Margaret Kelly and the loss of her sister. Amen. I want to continue praying for their family. Amen. Pr continue praying for her peaches. Amen. We wish her well. Um, I believe her recovery is coming, coming along pretty well. Uh, definitely want to pray for her that God will restore her and raise her up. Also want to pray for Reverend Rob Kelly. Amen. Always good to see him as well, but we want to continue keeping him in prayer. All right. If you are um, any other announcements that you know that you're unsure of, go to our church, uh, our Facebook members only page, church family, and you can look for all announcements there and make sure you like our YouTube channel. Sister Peck say she going to get it done tomorrow. Amen. Amen. See, that's what I'm talking about. Exercise your right. Amen. Amen. So um, like our YouTube channel, make sure we, uh, if you, if you um, miss any announcements, go on our church Facebook page. Everything will be there. If you simply require prayer, email info at paradisembc.org. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to close us in prayer and release us to enjoy the rest of our Wednesday evening. I want you to be safe. I want you to be blessed. I want you to continue to walk in favor and watch God move on your behalf. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now for your word. God, thank you for allowing us to sit and study uh, this matter of the nine supernatural gifts of the spirit. God, I pray, oh God, you'd help us not to be afraid to exercise the gifts that you've given us. God, and we know that you said in your word that we desire the gift. God, all we have to do is just pray to you, Father. And if it's your will, you will, you will see fit to bless us with the gifts that we desire. Now, God, I ask that you would bless us indeed, that you would enlarge our territory, that your hand would be upon us, that you keep us from all evil. God, grant unto us grace, peace, and mercy as we go to our various destinations. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. Remember, relationships, restoration, renewal. Paradise 2020, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you on the parking lot of Paradise this coming Sunday at 11 a.m. sharp. Until then, you all be blessed. God bless you.